Now also joining me uh, on the show are, uh, is our correspondent Sudhir Kumar and our Professor uh, Shriram Cholia, uh, the foreign affairs expert. Let uh, me welcome Professor Shriram uh, Cholia. Professor Cholia, it's uh, as uh, uh, our correspondent Sudhir is saying that it's a very serious incident. Uh, why, in your opinion, uh, did the Chinese choose to escalate it when it was agreed at the core commander level, it was agreed at the div commander's level, there were serious of talks that were happening even at the diplomatic level, the JSEA uh, spoke with the DG in the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs of China where the two ambassadors had joined uh, via video link about, a, about uh, a week back. So if such was the understanding, why suddenly do we see this spurt, this escalation uh, could it have, you know, strategic dimensions than just a tactical move? Well, Amrit, uh, definitely the Chinese believe in surprise and uh, in using uh, offensive force uh, in a limited way. Of course, they are not interested in a full-fledged war. But I think they have always looked at, um, you know, India or any other country with whom they have territorial disputes in terms of how we can poke them here and there and how we can test the water as to what is the resistance we will face to our expansionism. So that's always been their game. And I think uh, you're right, there is an institutional mechanism. So many processes are in place now to try and resolve this. But nonetheless, I think uh, the PLA and the hardliners in China still believe that, you know, they are superior and that they can push their way and, uh, you know, gain advantage, territorial advantage. In fact, China has settled Amrit uh, its territorial dispute with more than a dozen countries. But mm. with India, they don't settle it. You know, we have had round after round after round after, you know, border talks. The demarcation is still not there. That's why we say it's a perceptional LSE. And mm. that's why they are now claiming that we, our forces went uh, at two points, crossed over into the Chinese side, and uh, that's what they're alleging last night from last night's incident. So mm. I think the um, uncertainty and not settling the thing fully is part of the larger game plan. Because, you know, one is the military force level to force level. We are matching them now, and they're worried about it. But second, I think is a broader global picture. They think the India is the only country that could be standing in the way of, you know, their hegemony and their expansion. And in this region, you know, there, there are smaller countries of ASEAN and Japan uh, and Vietnam, Indonesia and so on, Malaysia, which they think they can, you know, ride roughshod. But with India, because it's a bigger power and it's rising under Prime Minister Modi's leadership, our, you know, yeah, over the last six years, if you take overall our economic growth, our uh, military preparedness, our prestige, our image in the world, all of these are rising. So there is a problem with that, you know, because the Chinese think they don't want to share uh, the, the, the cake, you know, they believe that there's only one sun in the horizon, as the Chinese mm. proverb goes. So the, to that extent, as long as India and then our relationship with the US and with other countries that have problems with China, the Chinese continue to believe that keeping pressure on India through military means and this surprise element is necessary to, uh, you know, extract concessions from us in other spheres. They don't uh, publicly say that, they don't come to the negotiation table with mm. them, but there is that signaling. But I think we are up to the uh, task and really uh, the way we have our forces have shown courage. We have sacrificed lives yesterday. It's a very, very sad moment, Amrit. But the point is that we are standing our ground. We are not yielding one inch. And I think our goals we have com com now conveyed to them. They cannot get away with this browbeating uh, or the salami slicing. Professor you know? Cholia, so you say that, that our forces... Force them to rethink. Uh, Professor Cholia, you say our forces are standing uh, ground and we are not allowed to be, we are allowing ourselves to be browbeaten here. But the Chinese would have surely factored in that if an incident after 1975 in which, you know, no killing took place, they would have factored in that India would react. Uh, what in your sense would be the Indian reaction to this? Would the Indians want to de-escalate? Would the Indians want to prevail upon them by persuading them and saying that there is no point uh, escalating the conflict? Or would the Indians also do something in a sense that uh, 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 would give a sense of retribution? Look, I think a bit of tit for tat has been going on since the standoff started a few weeks ago. Okay. And um, they are they are also aware that we now have a mountain strike core and other means by which we can also penetrate the Chinese side of the border. We have got deterrence hmm. and, if necessary, even counter offensive capabilities. So I think uh, they, they should uh, get them. You know, it's a China at the end of the day does a cost benefit calculation always. 
Hmm. They do. They are not irrational actors. So, I mean, Pakistan, for example, with the jihadist mindset, they don't care for the cost. You know, they keep on want to fight India all the time. I don't think the Chinese are looking for it. They're, as I said, they're trying to push the envelope, see how far they can go. And now that we have laid down the red line, our prime minister said, you know, this is it, and you cannot cross beyond this. I think slowly we will disengage. Uh, the Chinese always, you know, believe that uh, you know in in peace through strength. You know, they 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 settle disputes either with very weak countries, with whom you know they who are not seen as threats to them, or hmm. with relatively strong countries like Russia, for example. They had a long border dispute with Russia. They settled hmm. it about uh, 10, 15 years ago, right. uh, and they even made concessions. So hmm. I think as we grow in strength. Eventually, they will step back. You know, they won't want full-fledged confrontation. It's a rational actor. But you are right. I think they are looking for ways and means to continue to push us here and there and see. You know, and I think uh, that's why our strategic resolve is critical. As far as our forces go, you know, uh, there will be a lot of um, talk about morale. Uh, our Bihar regiment, for example, which is at the LAC, if you lost a colonel, if you lost, you know, an officer as well as uh, Jawans, you know, people's blood will be boiling. They'll say we have to, you know, teach them unless we have to give, give it back to them. But I think India is a mature democracy. We want, we are under leadership of prime minister. We will go with his guidance. Okay. He, you know, whatever he suggests, I think we need some kind of a uh, this stalemate to slowly melt and de-escalate. So I think overall, we will accept whatever happened as very unfortunate, but I don't think we are looking for escalation. Maybe somebody on the ground might say, you know, uh, we have to give eye for eye, but on the hmm. as a you know big country, a responsible power, we are not into wars. We don't hmm. do aggression, and if the other side is doing aggression, we just hold them back, you know, push them back. But we are not looking at uh, you know any kind of limited conflict at this moment when we have Corona and many other problems. So hmm. I think the Chinese should understand that we are also looking to try and uh, break this logjam, okay. and they should not make matters worse for themselves because hmm. they have suffered casualties. They know. The costs are rising for them, and this, so they should uh, step back. Professor Cholia, before I let uh, you go, one last question. Professor Cholia, that what do you think is the way forward now? What will happen next? Well, I am a believer, Amrit, in high-level political strategic guidance, as they call as the both sides have called it. Uh, we were all very optimistic when the Wuhan summit happened, then the Mamallapuram, and uh, you know, uh, sometimes uh, in diplomatic history shows that uh, countries come really to the brink before they can look for long, longer term solutions. So maybe it had to get uh, worse before it will get better. Uh, so I would uh, really place all my hopes on our prime minister's leadership. He has been very, very astute in understanding China. You know, and uh, uh, the, uh, uh, and Dr. Jay Shankar, our foreign minister, has been saying how to read the tea leaves, how to read the Chinese, you know, the strategic intent. I think we have more or less correctly gauged it, and that is the guiding principle on the basis of which we are going to negotiate with them. And I think more confidence building. There are already so many confidence building measures and uh, mechanisms. One of them may be to how to avoid these uh, uh, physical, you know, brawls. You know, they are mm. not as bad as gunfire or artillery shelling. But uh, come on, we are losing troops now. Uh, earlier, it was just people getting injured on both sides. So how to you know stop this uh, what the Chinese call a wolf warrior you know type of diplomacy and wolf warrior way of mm -hmm. dealing with the world? You know they have this macho thing and they want to fight. Now uh, this is almost like a you know um, uh, dramatic where uh, forces are actually physically coming to blows in a hand-to-hand -hand combat. I think we should also avoid this because while the casualty numbers may not be high compared mm -hmm. to firefight. Uh, the visuals are really bad because this shows that somehow that Indians and Chinese are enemies. We don't want to be enemies. We hmm. want to work it out with them. We are strategic rivals. We are competitors. Hmm. Let, it, uh, let us limit it to that. And also it's a zero-sum game by engaging in such conflicts. You gain nothing. There is a border to be resolved which will be resolved and mechanisms like the SR level talks etc. are in place. Perhaps they need to be strengthened but uh, this sort of uh, conflict or standoff or face-off or eye-to-eye eyeball situation does not lead uh, either side anywhere. Professor Cholia, many thanks for joining us for your time. Thank you for the